Welcome back to What RT Noobs. This is a Jagdpanzer E100. It's a tier 10 German tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Mainz, and this one is under the command of Sunshine Billy. Now, what can you say about it? 17 centimeter gun, very big alpha. It's capable of 1050 alpha. And well, he's got some good partners with him. It's an AMX AC48, tier 8 French tank destroyer. And the tier 9 one, the T95, the Doom Turtle, and he goes by the name of Harry Wookie. And back in the RT, we've got the Lord of Doom. What a set of names. Well, Sunshine Billy is headed off towards the western side. Looks like he's going to cover this end. Tortoise. And it looks like the medium tanks are going to go out quickly and probably try and find the enemy. Oh, he's found one. Yep, that is what they can do. Penetrating shot, 1,138, and he gets finished off by the Progetto. Okay, well, we've got a Renegade up there. The reload time is quite long, 21.68 seconds. Oh, and there's an SU-130PM in attendance. He just tried a blind shot and didn't get through the armor. Now, a lot of people who actually have the Jagdpanzer E100 will just blindly drive into um, the enemy like an assault tank would. And, of course, they'll take a lot of damage in the process. It's not impenetrable. You can get through the armor on a, J a Jagdpanzer E100 or Jaegeru. So it's probably not a good idea to treat it as an assault tank. I know a lot of people like to, but sometimes it can be better to be cautious and just sit at the back as a traditional TD would and snipe the enemy. Well, doesn't look like that renegade wants to come out from that corner. And he's actually doing the right thing in a sense because he's holding the enemy back from using the center island. Holding us back, I should say, from holding the center island. <laughs> Got Harry Wookie alongside us. He's got a 155mm gun. Oh, and the Leopard prototype has made him his way up via the water. And looks like he's got shots on that object 252U. He keeps getting hit and then he's killed by the SU-130PM. So, okay, looks like uh, Sunshine Billy's going to try and get a shot on that Leopard prototype. But the rock's in the way, so he's going to have to reposition a bit. No shot. And looking at the Renegade, he's queued up a heat round for his next round. Now, again, the, probably not necessary because he's actually got penetration of 299mm on standard ammo. And it goes up to a massive 420mm with a heat round. But the tanks he's up against there, the Renegade and the SU-130PM and the Leopard have all got thin armour. So a standard AP round will be enough to take them out. Well, he tries a speculative shot at that gap, and I'm not sure that was a wise decision, because now he's got to go through the loading process. The Leopard prototype goes down to our Progetto, but there's the SU-130PM. And he's come into sight, and we're not loaded, so we can't get a shot. Just hope he pokes his nose out again. And he is going to do it. Oh, yes! <laughs> Well, it was a heat round, so it's rather expensive, but he did get the kill on the SU-130PM. But that Renegade is still there. That's a bit of a problem. Well, we're two tanks up on the enemy at the moment, so it does seem to be going rather well. It's a tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it. And the enemy's pushing down the east side of the map. And that's not so good, because when that tends to happen, because there's, well, only a few places where you can sort of like put up a good defense, those tanks tend to get wiped out. Unless, of course, RT helps them, and let's hope that RT does. Harry Wookie, the T-95, has made his way over, and he's about to go on to the Middle Island. Yep, he's crossing the water. 
It said there's a T28 up there, and he's probably going to be shooting at our Badger and our T95 as they cross. One of the Badgers... Oh, it's not Badger, actually. It's a TDP BTU by the name of Badger. My mistake. Well, what do you expect? I'm only a second-rate uh, Jingles. <laughs> yeah, that T28's not coming out from behind that rock. <laughs> He's just going to stay there. He's quite happy. If he does move, the Progetto will put a shot into him. And now he's getting hit by that TBP VTU. And he, oh, he's gone over the edge of the cliff. And the VTU's come around the corner. And, well, there's another kill. So that's two shots, two kills. But he was seen this time, so he needs to move into cover. Because the enemy does have an RT. It's a GW Tiger P. The tier 8 German. And he does, or he could have, a 21 centimeter gun. Which means he would be capable of doing 1,050 alpha. Well, he hasn't got shots in those tanks. You see they've managed to kill off all the defenders on the east side. And the only tank that's holding them back now is a tortoise. The tier 8 British. Tier 9 British, what am I saying? Now there's a... 703 version 2 up there or rather there was because that's the third kill with three shots so definitely got a reaper badge there wargaming doesn't make as much um, song and dance about getting a reaper but it is actually quite a good badge to get if, if you've taken out three tanks with three consecutive shots that is pretty good going and it looks like that renegade is making his way up the north approach to the hill and he might make it into the grounds. Yeah, we didn't see him get up there, but I suspect he is on top of the hill now. Well, our advantage has now dropped to just one tank, but the T-95 is moving steadily towards the enemy cap. And the enemy's just lost their VK-101P to the tortoise. Well, they've still got a lot of very beefy tanks. The Object 705A, the FV4005. Uh, looks not to me like Sunshine Billy's thinking about relocating. Oh, there's the Renegade. He did get into the castle grounds. Now, can he get around into that Renegade? Oh, and there's a ship bomb. And, oh dear, he just took out our Pantera. And we tried a shot, but it missed. And the annoying thing is now that we know that the Renegade is on the south end of the hill, overlooking this area. I don't think we were spotted, because we hadn't really pulled out behind the bush. But it means the FV4005 is also in the castle grounds and could be looking out over the south area. Harry Wookie in the T95 has made it to the enemy cap and he's found the GW Tiger P. Just found him. Proximity detect, I should think. Hopefully he'll kill that guy off. It might draw some of the enemy back to their own cap. That'll take some of the pressure off us. The MX AC-48 is just a short distance away. And Sunshine Billy's decided he can move. Oh, there's the Renegade. He's actually headed towards our cap. Or their cap, rather. So he's trying to get the T-95, who's killed the GW Tiger P. And our AMX AC-48 decided to make a quick move to the hill. I suspect he's going after that FB-4005. The 705's gone around the hill. So we know where all of the enemy tanks are located now. The Renegade's up near the island, uh, just or the south edge near the cap. So 
So I suspect the Team 95 bottled into that little corner, trying to defend it against the Renegade. He'll probably be trying to put rounds onto the the um, Capola or the lower plate of the T95. Probably the Capolas because it's easier to hit those than it is the lower plate. Okay, AMX AC 48s into the castle grounds, spotted, and the FV 4005. Is he doing damage to him? Sunshine Billy's decided to move up. 705's coming around the hill. It looks like he's going after the AMX AC 48. Waiting for sign of that 705. And the AC-48 kills the, the ship barn. And there's the 705. Oh, we just missed him. But we were spotted. And he's going after the AC-48. He's backing into that corner. And unfortunately, we've also lost the T-95. Yeah, that renegade took him out. This is not looking so good now. And we've just lost the AC-48 to the 705. So I think what's going to happen now is that, yeah, Sunshine Billy, with still all of his hit points remaining, is going to go into the hill grounds, the castle grounds, and take out the 705. The M53, M55 move it. Oh, he gets taken out by the 705 on the cliff top. But the 705 suddenly spotted Sunshine Billy coming around the corner. Auto aims on and eradicates the 705A with one shot. Oh, this is the um, new skin for the Yeageru, by the way. The one that uh, most people got in the loot boxes at Christmas. It carries a motorcycle, and that's probably so that the crew can get back to the engineering base, pick up the spare parts when the thing breaks down. Yes, they never actually built the Yeageru, but I'm sure it would have broken down as much as the other German tanks did at the time, especially the Ag Tiger, which was notoriously bad for its serviceability because, of course, they were asking the engines to do just just too much one of the heaviest tanks on the battlefield and this one would have been a very heavy tank on the battlefield as well well sunshine billy's looking out for that renegade no sign of him and there is the two minute warning you know i have the sneaking suspicion that the renegade would have gone south across the south island and he might be trying to come up behind us. He knows where we are because obviously he knows when we killed the 705. And he must be guessing that Sunshine Billy is looking out over the enemy cap. There's not enough time now to cap. He has to kill the enemy in order to win. And likewise for the Renegade. We don't know how much hit points the Renegade has. But I suspect he's lost a few. After all, he was in battle with the T-95. Yeah, if I was uh, Sunshine Billy at this moment, I'd probably be a little concerned about what's behind me. Yes, he, he did do a quick, sharp look to see, is there something behind me? Well, that's the last minute horn. And the Renegade is behind him! I was right. And he bounces around off the rear. Sunshine Billy dives over the cliff. We're going to have a spectacular ending. The Renegade comes over to try and get a cliff dive kill. And gets blasted into oblivion. Yeah, you don't do that to a Yeageru. Bad move, Renegade. Bad move. I know he wanted the comedy kill. I know. Who wouldn't want a comedy kill? Yes, jumping on top of the enemy. I've done it a few times myself. 
Well, it's a second class tanker for Sunshine Billy in the Jaegeru, the Jagdpanzer E100. He managed to get a Reaper badge. He did kill three tanks with three shots. Very, very nicely indeed. He also picked up a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got five and a five for effect for doing more damage than hit points to his own vehicle. His win eight from that game was 4,247, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team scores. Well, that shot, that last shot, puts him at the top of the table when it comes to damage. 4,495 hit points. The next high scorer was the Object 705A with 4,175. Sadly, there was no high caliber medal for Sunshine Billy. I suspect it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pool in total. And when it came to kills, he managed to get five, just one short of getting a Top Gun, whilst the Object 705 managed to get four. And when it came to base XP, he was a little further down the table. Yes, he was fairly static for most of the game. Uh, 826 base experience points. The high scorer was the Progetto 46 with 1,121 base experience points. And that's because he did do a lot of spotting. 2,689 hit points of spotting assists during that game. And he picked up a Leather Slayers medal for taking down two enemy tanks, which were one tier higher than him. And uh, after that, it was the Tortoise who put up a solid defence on the east side of the hill. 2,945 hit points for him, 986, and the E100, 3,590 hit points, 2 kills, and 966 XP. And not forgetting the RT, Lord of Doom, who got a Confederate for 3,132 hit points of damage, 1 kill, and 857 base experience points. So let's have a look at detail. Sunshine Billy fired only nine rounds in that game. Unfortunately, he mostly fired premium ammo. Uh, six direct hits, six penetrations, 4,495 hit points of damage, of which 3,349 were at more than 300 meters. He received two hits from the enemy. Both of them were non-penetrations. Yeah, the armor on this thing's pretty tough, but it can be penned with the right ammo. He blocked damage of 880 hit points, Damage six of the enemy, kill five of them, and did 162 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 49,808 credits, got 18,429 from Holdy Ops, total 68,237. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he took away 23,073 credits. He got 25 bonds during that game. He got Veni Vidi Vici, that's, that's where he got that from. Uh, 1,239 XP. And 4,956 from Holy Ops took away 6,195 altogether. So it's a pity he didn't pick up any awards other than the Reaper, but it was a, a good action because a lot, if you read chat during that battle, you can see that the other players on his team actually thought they were going to lose because they were losing tanks one after the other. And especially when that last. Uh, um, the Object 705A took out the RT, they thought, oh, we're doomed now and we're not going to win. But of course, they didn't take into account the fact that Sunshine Billy still had all of his hit points and he was intending to use them to make sure that they won the game. Um, but for that renegade, he could have stayed away. He could have decided not to fight and forced a draw on them. But what he did instead is he tried to come and kill Sunshine Billy and he paid for it by losing the game. So there you go. There's a lesson. If you're up against something very, very tough, Try not to fight it, try to force a draw because it may be easier to get a draw or even better to cap at the other end in a place where the enemy can't get to you. If that renegade had actually gone to their cap and hidden behind that rock inside the cap, I don't think Sunshine Billy would have been able to get down to the cap again in time to actually kill him. And that might have won the battle for the enemy team. But the renegade, well, he decided he wanted to get a kill and in the end he paid for it. So, if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.